Okay, so I've got a quick minute to make a video, so let's do some updates as fast as I can, but I'll probably get distracted. First thing, um, there's a poll in my community tab, um, which is about like which merch shop should I go for, and the two options YouTube has given me is either Spreadshop or Spring, which used to be Teespring, and I'm really having trouble deciding which one to go for, so if you guys could vote on which one you think is vet better, um, I'll go for the one that has the most votes. Like if one pulls way ahead, I'll go with that, or if the votes slow down, um, we'll see which one is coming out in front and I'll give it a go and we can make some shirts and whatever um, I'll probably try and get this on a, a shirt because I want that and then if anyone else wants that and I don't know we can come up with some ideas make some cult shirts and just have some fun with it and yeah I don't know we'll see how that goes I know my wise godmother was interested in the idea and a few others and um, we just have some fun with it. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, this is for the schizoids who are watching, or people who were interested in schizoid stuff. If you don't already know the channel Mind Mastery, um, I'll put a link to that somewhere. I'll put a link to the merch poll and also to Mind Mastery. Um, she's that life coach, so in my first video, I think I made a little playlist. It's an unlisted playlist, so you'd have to go to that video to find it. Um, but some of the things like helping me explain schizoid to you know, friends and family. I had some of her videos in there and I've done a, an interview with her. So you, if you're interested in that, subscribe to her channel. I'll also like, when it comes out, I'll put it in the community tab. Um, but I know that doesn't always go out to people. So if you're interested in that, subscribe to her channel and maybe harass her about schizoid questions because I'm not that interested. I mean, I'm still gonna update on what's going on with me, but I'm not really someone who wants to be a schizoid YouTuber, it's just a thing that happens to be part of my life. Um, but she's actually focused on stuff and has tips on how to get through life. So if you don't, don't already know her channel, go and have a look at that. And then there's a very long-winded thing coming up with me in it. And that also, for people who are not interested in the schizoid stuff, I do talk a bit more about my sense of self and some destroyer things. Um, so that might be interesting for some of you other guys. And then those of you who just like my live streams, it's a little bit like that. So <laughs> yeah, um, go check out her channel. Um, she's got to focus on schizoid these days. So cool. Um, another thing. So at work, um, this week I got bitten by a little baby tick and I had no idea that they could be really 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 small and so um, Yeah, that was a bit of a shock and it's in exactly the same place on my stomach that I got um, Bitten by an adult paralysis tick when I was younger like gosh, maybe 12 or something um, so that was really weird uh, and you know, it's been so long since I've been bitten by a tick and actually looked it up that we kind of did it wrong. Um, my brother helped pull it out with some tweezers and then I'm Googling and it says, don't use tweezers, you're supposed to kill it first. And um, so now I've got this horrible little lump with an itch and I had to go to the pharmacist and get some advice, but it's going okay. And I just have to hope that I don't get um, that meat allergy because that would be really sad for me. Now in Australia, as far as we know, there is not Lyme disease, so I'm, hopefully okay there and it was only a little baby one and for Lyme disease it has to be attached for like 36 hours maximum it would have been on me is maybe 12 hours so I should be fine there for those of you thinking about that but yeah so I'm in Sydney um and yeah bonsai uh, my workplace is um like in a sort of bushier area but so I didn't realize that they were already out and about so if you're in the same sort of area just keep an eye out for ticks make sure your dogs have um, you know, what we're using next guard spectra. Um, there are a few other tick prevention things, so make sure your dogs are covered because if I'm already being bitten, that makes me a little bit nervous for the upcoming tick season. Um, and it's really, really itchy, and I'm trying to distract myself from scratching it um, because I'm not supposed to do that, and I was getting a bit of a rash, and I had to talk to the pharmacist about what do I do. Um, but the rash isn't spreading, so I don't have to see a doctor, thank God. Okay, um, speaking of dogs, so also on Tuesday, my I had to drop my dog off at the vet, and he had his dental work done, because I had noticed like a wobbly tooth, and the bad breath smell, 
and he had a checkup, and so yeah, he had to go in a general anesthetic, he had six teeth out, some of them just fell out though, so they didn't charge me for those teeth, um, but yeah, pretty, <laughs> a bit of an ordeal for the poor thing, so Hope has a few less teeth, um, thankfully, or, that was done in August, August is dental month at my local vet, so, um, I got a hundred dollars off, that's the important thing, let's not talk about how much it cost me, let's talk about how much I saved, um, um, yeah, but so with him, um, no, he actually did pretty well. I mean, he's 10 years old, general anesthetic is a bit, but, um, he, yeah, he did well. At, when they do those anesthetic things, apparently they have like a hot air blanket and they were telling me that in the cage they tried to put that on him and he wouldn't stay under the hot air blanket. Um, he was already up and moving around. And he would only settle if, like, one of the vets or the nurses, like, got in the cage, sat with him, and then he would snuggle with them and totally suck up to them. And apparently he got passed around a bit and was very popular with all the girls. So, yeah, <laughs> he's kind of cute. Anyway, I'm telling that story more for me. I know that some of a lot of you probably don't care about my dog, but... Um, yeah, uh, like when I deleted a lot of videos off YouTube, I kept a lot of the pet stuff. So here's me leaving a bit more pet stuff on my channel. Um, yeah, I just think it's so funny that he sucks up to everyone because when he also had his, um, 2020, uh, uh, immune mediated thrombocytopenia issue and he had to have his blood transfusion and all that, apparently he did the same thing, sucking up to everyone. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, he's so anxious going, but once he's there, he's just everyone's friend. Well, every human's friend. He's more of a, he pre prefers humans over other dogs. So yeah, not the most social with his own species, which is kind of how I feel in a way. I, mean, I feel more like an alien. Anyway, so, um, yeah, we had a checkup today and I'm still in, like, I've had to talk to people and I've been walking and it was cold and I, it was a brisk walk. So I'm trying to use that energy to get through this video. Um, uh, yeah, so he's got stitches. He lost a few at the front and pretty much all the ones down the bottom between his fangs and then like one up the back and, uh, Yes, he's probably going to be chewing mostly on one side, and so, um, oh, for the moment he's got to have wet food, he's, he's, I've made some boiled chicken for him, and also he's got tuna in spring water, things are very easy on his stomach, he loves them as well, um, he's got antibiotics, um, I think he can come off his pain meds now, um, uh, and then, yeah, in a couple weeks, I can slowly introduce him in back onto his dry food, and then he can have Orovet chew, and then I've got to brush his teeth with the little thing that goes on your finger, and then you try and get it in there, and they hate it. Um, but I'm trying to uh, delay the amount of time before he has to have more dental work done, because, you know, he is getting older, I don't want him to go under too much general anaesthetic, even though they're really good, like, the technology's a lot better than it used to be, he has all the blood tests before he goes under, um, yeah, I'm trying to delay that a little bit more, so I've got to really try and get him to brush his teeth, last time I tried he hated it, but, gonna give it another go, so that's, um, Hope's vet, now as for the human vet stuff, <laughs> as for my issues, psychology, so, um, yeah, this week, what, uh, we've been doing a bit of work on sense of self, but my sense of self has been a bit more stable in the past week, I think, because I was so tired and I was getting depressed again, um, I just had some really bad mood days, and, um, uh, yeah, so that, the, the sense of self issues I have, were less of a thing because I was so preoccupied on being depressed, I guess. And then I tried to bring up some of the Destroyer stuff to help me with my art and to just not feel depressed anymore. And no, it didn't work. It seems to me that if I try to use that part of me for something, like if I try to use it on purpose, it's like, nah, just it's not, it doesn't cooperate. Um, I've had that experience as well, trying to use the energy that comes from that part of me to do more exercise. And same thing. Uh, I think I actually felt really queasy trying to do that, and it's just not cooperating. So it's one of those things that flares up in my psychology just to screw with me at the moment. It's not helpful for anything. Um, anyway, so yeah, in the past week, I haven't had much noise in the, in my head or, you know, there's a bit of stuff that goes on in my body. I know that if you don't know what I'm talking about, this might be a little bit confusing, but I don't feel like explaining it right now. So um, this week in therapy, instead of looking at Self, sense of self stuff. We looked more at like um, 
what would you call it? Like plans for the future, mainly to do with treatment options. Like, you know, if what we're doing now um, doesn't doesn't produce results and I need more help, what are we going to do? So um, a few things. And then also thinking about, you know, I had all this crap with Centrelink. I, I won't go into, but, you know, sort of thinking about what can we do with that? So, um, you know, so my psychologist, she's sort of confirmed that she's happy to write you know, whatever I need to be written to send off to Centrelink if I need more evidence of all the crap that I'm going through. Um, we talked a little bit about the disability pension and I said, I just, I can't, I can't go through that right now. It's, it would be too stressful. And then you also have to be fully, fully diagnosed, fully treated and fully stabilized. And I, I'm not convinced that I'm any of those. Um, now, fully treated is a difficult one because, like, you know, if you've still got the condition, how can you consider that treated? But I guess it's, like, treated as much as you can be and maybe you're just doing maintenance treatment at that point. Fully diagnosed because I have sense of self, dissociation issues uh, and, you know, is depression and schizoid comorbid, is that all I have? Maybe there's more, so I'm not convinced that I'm fully diagnosed. Um, we need to either rule out other things or find figure out what else is the problem and of course with schizoid I am always open to the possibility that you know maybe there's something that fits me better um but we actually did talk about you know my psychologist asked how did you get diagnosed and I explained you know how that went with my doctor and um she sort of agreed with you know after we were talking about a few things she's like yeah so at the moment it's the thing that fits the most I think she's sort of of that field where you don't like a lot of psychologists don't want to diagnose you with a personality disorder because it is like one of those more stigmatized kinds of things um but she sort of said yeah schizoid is the thing that fits the best at the moment so we're staying with that diagnosis um but staying open to the possibility that we figure out more fully diagnosed treated stabilized I am not stabilized stable in my I'm still going through the whole trauma roller coaster so we'll we'll see where that goes um oh man so yeah and then the stress of like applying for DSP I'm like I don't it's not worth it to go through that all I want is for Centrelink to like I'll stay on the regular um job seeker thing but if they can drop their expectations and not harass me to do more work and unsuitable work um, like, I'm doing the best I can with what I have, and it's, it's turning into this pattern, and I just, I can't, so we talked, we talked about that, and I won't go into it more, it's just like, I mean, maybe one day I'll have to admit that I am that, <laughs> that messed up, and I need more help there, but for now, I, I'm, you know, I'm still living with my parents, so financially things aren't that bad like you do get more money on disability pension in Australia compared to the unemployment one um but I don't need that extra money desperately enough to go through the whole process and yeah still sort of working on what's going on with my head have we done everything we can for it okay um another thing was um she brought up the NDIS which in Australia is the National Disability Insurance Scheme um because the clinic actually treats people who have, like quite a lot of people who have borderline personality disorder and some of them were able to get on the NDIS to fund extra therapy. And so, you know, is there a way for me to have extra therapy funded for schizoid personality disorder? I, I don't know, it's something to think about. A lot of these things are something to think about, not necessarily something to do now. It's just sort of park it as something to so I don't know we'll see how we go um I have enough sessions to get close to the end of the year and then I could probably self-fund a few extra sessions and then it'll be Christmas and we'll probably have to take a break anyway and then it'll be the new year and I can apply for you know another round through the government so I'm not too worried about that at that, this stage but if I do decide that I need to do more therapy or you know keep trying at this stuff. Maybe that's something I can look at. Okay, another option is we talked about inpatient treatment again. And yeah, probably would have to be private. Um, 
And we talked a bit about the group therapy thing, which is the thing that I'm like, oh, I really don't want to, especially I've seen like, there was some schizoid chick whose video I watched and she said she did a thing where there was group therapy and she could tell straight away that she did not fit in there and was just not going through the same thing as everyone else. I'm, I'm pretty apprehensive about group therapy. And also like, you know, having done an art degree, we used to sort of sit in a circle and people would talk about their art or I don't know. And I mean, you know, it, it was a bit art, like therapy-ish in a way. And I was so bored listening to everyone. I could not stay awake. I had to like have my Pokemon go <laughs> to have something else to focus on because I was so bored by what everyone is saying. So yeah, I think I would struggle with group therapy just, oh, and for other reasons as well. Um, but, you know, so if I was going to do inpatient treatment, I would have to look at somewhere that does have individual therapy because some of those places only do the group therapy. So I'd have to be careful and make sure they do have, even if I have to do the group therapy, at least if I have an individual component. Um, and then other thoughts around that is maybe I do need to be on medication. So if I was there for a while and they could monitor me and then try different medications and see what works um, in that more focused environment instead of waiting weeks to get back to a psychiatrist and, oh, it takes so long. I don't know, like maybe that's a way. And then also they have like exercise and diet things going on. Like they've got a whole bunch of people looking after you and maybe that would be a better chance for me to figure out some of the more physical issues that might be a problem with me. Like, um, we also, we, we did talk also about like diet things cause maybe they're, because I have such depleted energy so much of the time, maybe there is some food that I'm eating that my body is not reacting well to. I already know I can't have alfalfa. Um, I, I'm a little bit lactose intolerant and I'm a little bit soy intolerant, but maybe there's something else and maybe that's affecting my mood. So um, she said she suggested looking into histamine diet because I do have hay fever and so maybe there's something going on there. Um, but also like I think um, actually Mind Mastery, she, she, you know, in email suggested like doing an elimination diet. Um, which I think my GP has suggested in the past. Just the difficulty is because I'm low weight and low appetite and it took me forever to get to this healthy weight and just to maintain it. Um, I need to be careful about how I do any kind of diet. So yeah, but if I was in an inpatient situation, maybe that'd be easier. So yeah, but because um, <laughs> it's going to be private, it will be expensive. Um, so maybe I need to save a bit more money or else upgrade my private health insurance and then wait whatever the waiting period is. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then I've also decided that while Hope is still alive, I don't want to do the inpatient thing because um, no one else is going to look after him the way that I do. And I don't know how long I would need to be in inpatient treatment to see any kind of effect. Um, so yeah, with that uncertainty, I just couldn't leave him for that long. Um, and I think I'll be okay while he's still around. I think I'm really going to struggle once he's not. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the inpatient thing I'm still considering, but I'm trying to push it out as far as I can. Um, yeah, but I'm a bit more firm, especially with, you know, he's got health problems as it is, um, and he is getting older. I'm just like, no, I've got to hold on long enough that I don't have to do the inpatient thing while he's alive. So that is a possible future plan. And then who knows, like, if I go to the inpatient thing and they can't really make a significant difference to my life, they've got so many people there, maybe they could help me with DSP, the disability pension, if I really end up needing it. So those are some plans for like, you know, <laughs> if, if our current attempts at treating my depression in the context of schizoid, if that goes nowhere, these are some possibilities to try and make me, I don't know, feel like there's still something to hang on to and who knows like by then there might be other options available like I've been curious about you know they've got like ketamine treatment for depression I don't qualify but maybe one day they'll open that up and I'll be able to have a you know try it I don't know there's a few there's a few of those weirder options that are you know coming to uh, getting more testing and might one day be approved for someone like me so we'll see how things go um yeah, I do feel like at some point I'll have to be on antidepressants again, which I'm 
I don't know, just getting through the side effects. I think a lot of that stuff isn't worth it until I'm really doing badly. And I think it will be after hope's gone. And, you know, if that affects my ability to work as well, heck, just go after the inpatient treatment. So there's a the thing. The problem is um, with all the stuff that we're talking about, it doesn't really help me right now with... Um, like, what am I doing with my life? Like, this is just treatment stuff. Okay, great. I have treatment options. But what am I doing right now with my life? And it's really hard to focus on what to do. I mean, I'm actually going to go to the studio, so I better wrap this up. Um, I bought some new pens. Um, so I try that. Try and make my text-based art a bit easier. Um, the studio is good because, like, I'm making myself go one day a week. So... Then I actually have to sit down and make art. But the rest of the time, it's really hard to focus and be like, okay, I need to do something. Here's a list of things, list of ideas to do. And I just, I, maybe it's because I've got too many things to do that it's hard to um, focus, like hard to pick one and get started. But also I've had such, like the past month, so much going on, tired all the time. That hasn't been helpful. Maybe this month, if things stay chill, hopefully, maybe that'll give me the space to like get back on track with the creative things I'm doing. So music, I mean, art is going okay, but music, I've got, I've been proofreading this poetry book like all damn year. It's taken me so long. Um, making t-shirts, merch maybe, because that could be kind of interesting to try. Um, uh, what else am I doing? I don't even remember. Like, I've got this microphone, the SM7B, that's been sitting there, like, since the pandemic, and I haven't got a stand for it, and I haven't properly tested it. Like, I tested it once, and then it's just sat there. There's so much stuff that, like, you know, in the drum kit, I should do something with that. I should learn drums. Like, you know, if I don't want to go exercising, maybe hitting things and making noise will be a way to, like, at least get my body moving. I don't know. There's so much stuff. There's so many things that I could do, and I just, even though I'm talking fast now, um, because I'm trying to keep the energy up and just get through it, like, the rest of the time, I'm, I don't have any energy, and, ah, oh, everything's just a lot harder than it needs to be. Anyway, I've really got to go get myself ready to go to the studio, um, but that's sort of an update, so make sure you do that poll about merch in my community tab I'll put a link in the description and I guess I'll pin a comment as well also if you're interested in the interview that I've done subscribe to Mind Mastery because um, I think that's coming out in like a week or I don't know um, and then if you're interested in schizoid stuff anyway and there's also some other psychology type stuff that she's got on there like you know might be interesting for some of you who are into that so check it out because she's interested in this stuff I am not um, you'll get more of that kind of thing from her than from me. I've got a tick bite, it's really itchy. Hope had a bunch of teeth out. I think he lost six teeth altogether. Um, mostly small ones, some that just fell out, and then one big one. And then a bunch of psychology stuff. That's what we've talked about today. My hair is getting long, my centre part is starting to come back, except I can't, I, I don't, because this isn't a mirrored version that I'm seeing back, it's, um... I, I don't know, I was looking in the mirror the other day and I could see the centre part like trying to re-establish itself and I'm like, hmm, do I want that? Should I keep shaving my head? But I'm a bit bored of short hair and yes, I'm rambling, I'm going to stop, I'm going to go before <laughs> Paper Vampire mocks me. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, maybe I need to make a shirt that's like, I joined a cult and all I got was this lousy shirt. Um, I'm sure someone has one like that out there, but I want one for myself. Or for me, I make my own shirt for me. I started a cult and all I got was this lousy shirt. I need to write this stuff down somewhere. Anyway, um, bye. I'm going to the studio and Patreon guys. I'll probably have made the Patreon post before I put this video up. So thank you to my Patreon guys.